This meeting is being recorded. So we have the pleasure today to uh, to have as uh, speaker uh, Bastien Millen uh, from University uh, of uh, Toulouse FE. Uh, Professor Miller was a professor uh, since September 2023 up to today. Uh, he is full professor of mathematics at the University of Toulouse, France, uh, from uh, 2017 and 2023. He was assistant professor in the University of Paris, uh, Paris uh, 13. From 2016-2017, postdoctoral in the Universitat Zilif uh, under the supervision of uh, Jean Bertrand. And uh, from 2012-2015, uh, he prepared his uh, PhD thesis at the University of Paris 6 under the supervision of uh, Zan Shi. Uh, I must uh, point out that this is our first announcement of uh, Professor Bastien's uh, talk. His situation, his professional situation has changed. In fact, since the end of uh, 2023, he, uh, he becomes professor, full professor and no longer associate professor. Uh, the, um, professor uh, Bastien Millen, uh, Doctor professors are in uh, probability. He mainly studies the asymptotic properties of uh, spatial branching processes. He takes interest in the behavior of typical particles in these uh, processes, notably in the exter extremal, in the extremal process. He also takes interest in the application of these models uh, to statistical physics, uh, biology, medical study, and uh, computer uh, science. Uh, today, the talk uh, of uh, our speaker uh, has intitled uh, Malthusian Exponent and uh, Civil of Reinforced Galton Watson Process. Thank you again, Professor, for accepting our invitation, and please, you can start. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Agesh, for, for your nice introduction and for the invitation to speak uh, to this seminar. Thank you all for, for coming. So the, my, aim to, my aim today is to discuss the, some properties of uh, the Galton-Watson process with reinforcement. So first, uh, let me remind you uh, what Galton-Watson processes are. So a Galton-Watson process with reproduction law nu, which is a priority distribution on the set of uh, non-negative integers, uh, is defined as follows. So it's a, it's a population model in which each particle reproduces independently of one another, and uh, they create a number of children according to the distribution mu. So for all uh, integer n, we will denote by Zn the total number of individuals alive at generation n. So let me draw you a, a short uh, picture of what a galton watson tree is. So we start uh, at time zero with a unique ancestor, and this ancestor will give birth to a random number of children. So here he, he gave birth to three children. And then independently of one another, each child of this individual will uh, create a random number of children. So for example, the first one makes two children, the second one makes zero children, and the third one makes two children. And then uh, independently uh, of one another, every generation reproduces in the same way. So. Each uh, descendant creates a random number of children of their own, and so on and so forth. And we take interest in the asymptotic properties of this population model. And in particular, what we will take interest in is uh, in the growth rate of the population. So the growth rate of the number of vertices alive at generation n. So every, uh, every individual okay. produces only one time, only, just only one yeah. time. Exactly. So uh, reproduction events happen at discrete uh, times. So at time zero, the ancestor creates children. At time one, all of the children create children. And once the particle gave birth to a random number of children, it dies. It no longer uh, uh, takes uh, part in the process. So, uh, so the, the study of Galton-Watson processes is actually quite old. Right? It started in the 1850s. 
and we know really well the properties of this process. So if we denote by little m, which is the expected number of children of a typical individual, so it is the mean of the, of the low nu of reproduction of the individuals, uh, it is known since at least the 1850s that the expected number of individuals at generation n is equal to n to the power n. And we have a clear dichotomy in the evolution of the population in that if m is strictly larger than one, then the process can survive with positive priority. So it means that the, with positive priority, there will be an infinite uh, trees of individuals. Whereas if m is smaller or equal than one, then uh, this probability is equal to zero. The probability of survival is equal to zero. So if the average number of children of one individual is smaller or equal to one, the tree of the descendants of that individual will be finite almost short. So, uh, yeah. Sorry, just to remark here, if we take m equals one and uh, the law of the reproduction is deterministic. So, yeah, okay, so ex exactly. You, you're absolutely right, sorry. So there, there's only one uh, special case uh, that we need to avoid. We need to assume that J, the, the low nu, is not direct mass at one. If okay. nu is a direct mass at one, this is the only case where you can have mean equal to one and survival forever. So okay. I, I, I will bar completely this assumption from now on. And, I always assume that the distribution new is supported on more than one atom. Okay, uh, yeah, but thank you very much for the, for the procedure. So a way to, to prove this result, which is not the way that was uh, uh, used by uh, Vianney, Galton, and Watson, who worked by studying the, uh, the, um, sorry, the, 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 the Laplace transform of the law of the, of the branching of, of the Galton Watson process. So a way to prove this result would be to upset, to study the martingale, which is the number of individuals alive at generation n divided by its expectation. So it's not too hard using the independence of population to observe that the n over m to the n is a is a non-negative martingale, and therefore it converges almost surely to a non-negative limit, which I write the body. And Using uh, a tool called the spine decomposition, uh, we can show that actually the, the martingale W will be uniformly integrable under some quite uh, generic integrability conditions on uh, the, the martingale ZN and show that the priority that W is strictly positive. This is uh, something that has positive priority, and in particular, it shows that the gutted water processes survive with positive priority. So now, uh, to, to give a, a quick summary what happened for the gutted water process. So we know that it survived if and only if the mean number of children is strictly larger than one. We know that the expected number of individuals at generation n grows like uh, m to the power n. And we know that the almost sure behavior of the population is proportional to its expected behavior. And so our objective with a, in a joint work with Jean Bertouin was to uh, extend this type of results to a slight modification of the Galton-Watson process, which we call the reinforced Galton-Watson process. So how does the reinforced Galton-Watson process uh, changes uh, when compared with the original Galton-Watson process? So the idea is we now have two parameters, a probability distribution nu on the set of non-negative integers and a parameter q in 0, 1, which is a, a reinforcement parameter. And so uh, the Galton-Watson process with reinforcement q, uh, it is again a population model that will, that will evolve in the following fashion. So conditionally on what happened up to a given generation, the reproduction of every child is independent of one another, and they reproduce in one of the two uh, following fashions. So with priority one minus Q, then they give birth to a number of children according to the low nu. So exactly the same way as in a classical Galton-Watson process. But with priority Q, so with priority where the reinforcement takes place, 
then the number of children that the individual creates uh, is equal to the number of children that one of its ancestors between the root and the current uh, generation of the particle. Uh, so the one of the number of children that one of its ancestors made at that intermediate generation. So yeah, maybe let me draw a picture. So again, we start with a single individual at time uh, at uh, the first generation. And uh, because the initial ancestor has no parent of its own, we always assume that this individual makes the number of children according to the law new. Then uh, each of the children will reproduce independently of one another. So let's say that the first one reproduces according to the law new uh, again, so it creates a random number of children. The second one reproduces as well according to the law new, and here it made zero children. But the third one, uh, with priority Q, will uh, instead have a reinforcement step. And in this reinforcement step, it will choose one of its ancestors uniformly at random. So there's only one ancestor, which is a root. And it creates exactly the same number of children as the root. So this individual over here has exactly three children, the same as its parent had uh, one generation before him. OK, so then uh, we continue the, the process evolving uh, where every step evolves independently of one another. So here, for example, if I look at the descendants of that individual, so we had one child that reproduces according to the reinforced uh, setting, and it chose its direct parent to uh, make two children same as its parent, and the other one makes uh, an independent number of children, so it made one child exactly. And similarly, on the other side, right? I have three individuals here. Two of them reproduced according to the law new. So one made one made one child, one made zero child, and the third one reproduced again according to this uh, reinforced procedure. So it chooses uh, an ancestor uniformly at random, and this time it chooses the one two step ahead. So it chooses the root again, and it has three children exactly the same as the root. And we can keep uh, going like this, generation after generation. So uh, are there questions so far? Is the model clear? Yes, thank you. <clears throat> OK, thank you very much. So uh, OK, so just let me make some quick preliminary remarks. So first, I claim that this please, model. Please, doctor. Yeah. There is no intersection between the, this noise. Uh... No intersection between between this noise the the, uh, the children of the two two different person uh, maybe the the same children no 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 the, it's a uh, it's really a tree so you you have absolutely no loop right so the the, the picture the way I draw the picture is uh is a uh, completely arbitrary uh, there is no geometry in the model that I described right so why why, uh, why to point uh, uh, don't have the, the same children maybe a male female from two ascendant different ascendant I have the same children so yeah so in in the model that I consider so far it's really a model of um uh, single sex right uh, it's a uh, it's uh, asexual reproduction so you can think for example of a population of bacteria where they split, but they don't have like uh, sexual reproduction. So it's a single type of individual. There is no male and female, and so you you don't have this uh, this mixing of uh, of individuals. It's uh, it's a I mean it's a the reason why we we study this model in particular. It's because it has a, a lot of very interesting properties, notably the the fact that you can look at subtrees independently of one another. And this property is completely lost if you uh, if you if you work under the assumption that you can have mixing depending on with one parent in one side of the tree and another parent in another side of the tree. So that's why we only consider single sex reproduction, at least when we look at the first simplified model. Uh, every individual is the is the child of only one father, not project. yes, exactly. So. You could imagine the gator button process as, for example, representing, representing the tree of the sons of the son of the son of the son of an initial uh, an initial father or the daughter of the daughter of the daughter of an initial daughter. If you want to look at um, 
if you if you want to look at this model as a the model for sexual reproduction. So for example, if you want to track back the genealogical structure of the Y chromosome or or, or of the mito mitochondrial DNA, then you can still use this type of models because essentially the, the mitochondrial DNA of everyone is only inherited from the mother. And so for the you, you only need to look at the tree of the mothers of the mothers and not the tree of the whole population with uh, with mixing. So yeah, that's uh, but that's one assumption of the, the type of Galton Watson models that we look like that, that we look at, that you, you really have every child is descendant of only one parent. So and I, I claim that this model is uh, quite reasonable for, for, for modeling the uh, inheritance of a trait. Because if you look at uh, individuals in this model, so you, you will have, for example, uh, individuals that have a lot of children. And if they have a lot of children, then uh, all of those children will have positive priority of choosing this ancestor as the ancestor that they are trying to reinforce. And then it will create a, a subtree of individuals with very high reproduction uh, numbers. So it creates a natural, a, a natural quite uh, very mild model of uh, natural selection uh, when compared with the original Galton Watson process, which uh, in which the, the evolution is completely neutral, you don't inherit the trait of your ancestor. So uh, yeah, maybe. Another, another quick remark is that if you take your reinforcement parameter to be equal to zero, so if you have quite zero of choosing an ancestor and making the same number of children as that ancestor, then you are just a galton watson process. So you know exactly how this model behaves. If, on the other hand, the reinforcement parameter is equal to one, then what happens is that your initial ancestor will make a random number of children according to the law nu. And so with priority nu of k, it will have k children. And then all of those children will choose the, the ancestor and make the same number of children as it. Right? And then all the descendants two generations down the line will choose someone in the, in the tree beforehand. But all of them already had exactly k children. So, if the reinforcement parameter is equal to one, then the random tree that we create is a k -ary tree. So every node has exactly k descendants. And yeah, another remark that is important for us is that all the classical properties of uh, galton watson processes, so that such as homogeneity in time or this branching property, which allows us to tell that the tree uh, the subtree rooted that two different individuals are independent of one another, all those properties are lost because the, the general the, the way people create children depends on all the ancestry. And this ancestry is correlated by what happened near the root of the of the population. Okay. And a final remark is that if uh, an individual reproduces in a reinforcement method, then it chooses one of its ancestors at random. And so because it chooses one of its ancestors, we know that the child, uh, that the ancestor had at least one child, right? So when you reproduce using reinforcement, you always make at least one child. So uh, but individuals that make a reinforced steps, they tend to make more children than people that do regular steps according to the learning. So maybe to, to look at this in, uh, into a little more uh, uh, in a little more involved fashion, let's look at a very simple example. So I take a reproduction law new that has only two possible non-zero values. So with priority p, I make k children, and with priority one minus p, I make zero children. Right. So if I look at the Galton Watson tree with reproduction law new. I know that uh, this uh, tree will be supercritical, so it will have positive priority of survival, we, if and only if uh, k times p is strictly larger than one. So what happened in the reinforced Galton Watson tree with parameters nu and q? Well, then first, we know that with priority p, the root has k children, 
with probability one minus p, it has zero children. So we know that with probability one minus p, the, the tree dies out at the third generation. But on the event that the root has k children, then if I look at all the descendants at any generation, I know that their ancestors always had exactly k children. So I know that a child in this reinforced galton watson tree will give birth to k children with priority 1 minus q times p. So if it is not reinforced and the long u gives me k children, or if I get reinforced. So my, the priority is that in a reinforced tree, I give birth to k children is 1 minus q times p plus q, which is strictly larger than p. So the reinforced galton watson process will survive if and only if 1 minus q times p plus q times k is strictly larger than 1. And so this galton watson process with reinforcement can survive even if the original galton watson process does not. And we, accept th we expect this to be a very general feature, that reinforcement in galton watson processes should help the population to survive. So if a galton watson process with reproduction law new survives, then any reinforcement of this galton watson process should survive as well. And uh, we expect as well that we can have positive, we can have cases where the reinforced galton watson process survives, but the original galton watson process does not. Okay, so let me try another simple case. So now I assume that there exists an integer k so that the, the original load u has positive priority, gives positive priority to the fact that any individual has exactly k children. And I have this inequality. So for example, it would work if q times k is strictly larger than Then I claim that I can just concentrate myself uh, in studying the subtree of the reinforced gutter watson tree that consists of all the individuals that have exactly birth, that gave a birth to exactly k children. And this tree, once again, is an original galton watson process. And under this condition over here, the condition that 1 minus q new of k plus q times k is strictly larger than 1, this subtree will survive with positive priority. Therefore, the reinforced galton watson process will survive with positive priority. So this gives us a sufficient condition for the reinforced galton watson process to survive. So we see that, in particular, if I have a strictly positive reinforcement uh, parameter and if the original law new has unbounded support, then the, Gatton, the reinforced galton watson process will always survive. So it's, uh, it's, uh, the reinforced galton watson process can survive really easily. We just need unbounded support. No matter how small the priority to have a very large number of children is, if this priority is non-zero, I know that the, my process will always survive with positive priority. And to to avoid dealing the, with this type of uh, uh, to this type with this type of models, from now on we will always assume that we work with reproduction laws with finite support. And we write by k star the largest integers so that mu of k star is strictly positive. So k star is the largest integer, it's the support in the, uh, of the reproduction law new. OK. So now, wh what are the, the questions that we, we want to ask related to this model? So first, and probably simplest uh, question is, can we compute the expected number of individuals at the nth generation in our galton watson process? And can we compute the gross rate of this quantity? So the quantity that I'm interested in is the limit as n goes to infinity of the expectation of the n to the power one over n. So this limit should give me something that is akin to the mean number of children in the original galton watson process. It tells me how fast does the population grow as, uh, as time goes to infinity. So the second question that we can ask is, can we give a necessary and sufficient condition on the parameters nu and q that guarantees that my population survive with positive priority. And third and natural question, but sadly uh, the one that we still don't know much about is, can we say something 
on the almost sure growth rate of Zn conditionally on survival. So what I want in this third point is to study the limit as n goes to infinity of Zn to the power of 1 over n, not its expectation, and show almost sure convergence of this quantity. And okay, so so far in the, this joint work with Jobert one, we only give a partial picture to all these results. So we give some sufficient conditions, some uh, formulas for for these quantities, but we still don't have a, a full picture of what is happening. So yeah, let me maybe start with the first question: so What is the asymptotic growth rate of this expectation of the end? And uh, in a recent paper, we, we showed that uh, there exists indeed a strictly positive uh, a real number, n mu q, such that uh, we can say that the expectation uh, of the n grows exponentially like m to the power n. And in fact, we can be even much more precise and give an asymptotic equivalent from, uh, for the expectation of the n. And you see that this asymptotic equivalent is quite interesting because it tells you, in some sense, that the expectation of the, uh, the expectation of, of the n behaves as m nu q to the power n if and only if the first individual has given birth to exactly k star individuals. If it gave birth to less than k star individuals, conditional on this event, then the expectation of the n will be a little low of m nu q to the power n. Okay? So now, well, I don't give you the formula for m u q, so you're completely free of trying to find on your own what is this formula. So the model is quite simple to, to write, right? We have this galton watson process with reinforcement. So if you have a guess for the value of the formula, you, you are free to try uh, while I'm trying to explain how we obtain a formula uh, uh, from our work. Okay, so how did we do it? How did we compute the uh, formula for this m nu q? So first, what we did is uh, we used a so-called many to one lemma to compute the expected number of individuals at generation n as the expectation of a product of a random reinforced sequence. Then we use continuous time embedding of this random reinforced sequence to represent it as a dual process with, uh, with types. And using this uh, continuous time embedding, we were able to uh, obtain a system of ODEs, ordinary differential equations, satisfied by the function uh, which to t associate f of t, which is this type of uh, power series in uh, 1 minus e to the minus t. Then uh, to solve this system of ODE, we transform it into a partial differential equation. And we found, we found a way to solve this partial differential equation with enough explicit elements uh, that we were able to use flagellate method of analysis of singularity of the function f of minus log 1 minus z. So uh, the, we analyzed the singularities of the sum for n larger than 1 of z to the n minus 1 times the expectation of the n. And this uh, analysis of singularity was enough to deduce very precise uh, information on the asymptotic properties of the expectation of Z. OK? So let me uh, give you this first step. So the first step is quite a general lemma. And it tells you that if you have T uh, a rooted tree, which could be random, which could be non-random, uh, in any fashion that you want, and that you want to look at the expected number of vertices at that of that tree at generation n. So you, you want to look at the number of vertices at distance n from the root, and you would like to compute them using only one sequence of integer. So one way to do this is to say, well, okay, I start, I sit at the root, and I count the number of children that my root has. This number, I call it a naught. Then what I do is that I select uniformly at random one of the children of the root, and I jump to the child. And I compute the number of children of the child. This number, I call it A1. 
And then I choose one of the A1 children of this first child of the root, and I jump to this second position, and I keep going like this, right? So the, the picture is that I, may, I am going down the tree from the root towards the leaves, and at every step of the process, I choose one of the uh, AK number of children uniformly at random. And this, uh, this procedure, we can, uh, we can keep doing it uh, until we reach the nth generation. And then the quantity that I want to look at is the product along the path that I took of the number of children that I, that I encountered. And then claim that the, the expected number of leaves in that tree is exactly equal to the expectation of this product. Okay, so why is that? Well, in fact, it is a very simple computation. If I, I look from the point of view of a leaf, what is the probability that at random I will reach exactly that leaf? Well, this is one over a node times one over a one times one over a two times one over a three, etc. Et times one over a n, where a one a up to a n is the number of um, is uh, the number of uh, aunt, uh, children of each of the ancestors of my leaf. So this expectation here, if I decompose it along every single uh, vertex alive at generation n, I see that I have the expectation of the sum for all vertex at generation n of one, and therefore the number of vertices at generation n. So it's a very simple, very generic result, which allows us to compute the number of individuals at generation n in any tree. Okay? But now we can look more precisely at the random reinforced galton watson trees that we have constructed. Then we know that the number of children of the root is distributed according to the loan unit. And we know that if I am at generation uh, J, uh, uh, generation J. So I have my individual that uh, that gives birth now to a new number of children. The probability that it gives birth to exactly L children is one minus Q times new of L. So this is the event where I reproduce without reinforcement. Or with probability Q, then I know that I reproduce with reinforcement. And that means that I choose one of my ancestors uniformly at random, and I make exactly the same number of children as this ancestor. But we know exactly the number of children in each of those individuals, right? We know that uh, the, the root made a zero children, the, the child of the root made a one children, the child of the child of the root made a two children, etc. Cetera, et cetera. So we can compute this exactly and very explicitly. So the probability that aj plus 1 is equal to L is 1 minus q times mu of L plus q times the empirical measure of the sequence a0 up to uh, aj. And this is what we call a random reinforced sequence. So what we need to do to compute the expectation of zn is to compute the expectation of the product of this random reinforced sequence. So we need to compute some kind of a Laplace transform of the empirical measure of the random reinforced uh, random reinforced sequence, and a way to do this computation is to remark that the sequence a n can be seen as a sequence of type in a continuous time uh, random process called the multipath dual process. So this model, I, I don't want to go into too many details because it will go back really quickly. And the important thing here is that this. Galton, this uh, Yule process is a population model in continuous time that has nothing to do with my original process. So it's really an intermediate step in the computation form. So uh, yeah, I, I'm saying that if you look at a continuous time population model where each particle possesses a type between zero and k star, and so that a particle of type a, i gives birth to a child of type i with priority q times uh, Q plus one minus Q times new of I, and to a type J with J different from I at height one minus Q times new of J. Well, first you see that the total rate at which type I gives birth to a child is equal to one. It's independent of the type of the individual. 
But second, using the, the clockwork lemma, you know, you observe that the quality, the, the J plus one's individual uh, born from this uh, Yule process is equal to L, is exactly equal to this formula over N. So the sequence A1, A, A1 up to AN can be constructed as the set of types of the different children that we see in this Yule process. Okay, so that's exactly the way we write it. So we write yt of j, the number of particles of type j at time t. And we, uh, compu uh, a way to compute the expectation of the n, so it's to compute again the expectation of this product of this random reinforced sequence. And this uh, product can just be rewritten as a product from j going from zero to k star of j to the power y sub t n of j, right? Where t n, is the first time where by your process has exactly n individuals. So here I, I use the convention zero to the power zero equal to one and zero to the power anything greater than zero equal to zero, right? So uh, in particular, this product is equal to zero as soon as uh, yt of zero is strictly positive. Same way as uh, than in this product here, if one of the edges is equal to zero, then uh, the, the product is equal to zero exactly. Okay. So now I'm, I'm claiming that using the fact that this, uh, this uh, multi-type Yule process is a forget about the type, is just a regular Yule process because every individual gives birth to children at rate one, I know exactly the law of this uh, random variable TA. And I know exactly that, uh, that, that the distribution is independent from the, from the number of, uh, of individuals alive at the net. So instead of computing this product at, uh, at a random time Tn, where I have exactly n individuals, I can compute it at a constant time T, and I get this formula over here. So, this expectation of the product from j equals zero to k star of j to the yt of j, this is a quantity that is quite easy to compute. And because there is an underlying dual process, I know that it is just a power series in the expectation of the n. And the, uh, studying this function f of t will give me a lot of inform information on the expectation of the n. So, for example, if you assume that you already know that the expectation of Cn grows exponentially fast, you see that this power series, it will be converging as long as one minus e to the minus t is smaller than the growth rate of the, uh, of the expectation of Cn, and it will, be, uh, it will be diverging as long as it is bigger. So we have a way to compute the asymptotic growth of the expectation of Cn, as one over one minus e to the minus rho, uh, where rho is the explosion time of f of t, so the explosion time of this uh, of this uh, expectation. So we just need to compute this expectation and determine its explosion time to be able to to deduce the the growth rate of the expectation of the Okay. So let me try to, 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 to show you a little bit how we can do this computation. So I'm saying that because it is a multi-type Yule process, I can just use Kolmogorov's forward equation and, uh, and show that the M of T and A will satisfy a system of differential equation of the following form. So the derivative with respect to y, uh, to time of ML of T and A, where A is any sequence that I can put here, it is uh, ML of T and A times something that is nonlinear. So something that is nonlinear and that takes care of this random reinforcement, right? So the parameter Q here is the reinforcement parameter. And so I see that I have ML times QML plus something that depends on the non-reinforced uh, parameter, right? So what minus minus Q times the sum of uh, new J times MJ of C and A minus one. So this is the mixing part of the uh, of the ordinary differential equation. 
And what is interesting with this uh, system of differential equations is that you can rewrite them uh, as a PDE, right? So if I uh, define the function G of T and S to be equal to the sum of S to the N minus one times H MJ of T and A to the power N, yeah. and then I average this according to the loan U. So I see that the derivative with respect to time of uh, the MJ will make something appear, which is the MJ times QMJ plus phi of T. And so something that will make uh, appear the derivative with respect to S of the function G. And if we do the computation carefully, we obtain that the derivative with respect to time of the function G is equal to some uh, function times the derivative with respect to S of the function G plus phi of T times G of T and S. And this partial differential equation, if we forget about this second term, is just a transport equation. So it's quite easy to, uh, to, to, to study. So if we now don't forget about this plus phi of T times G of T and S, we see that the function G solves a, a transport equation with an extra linear cross term. And so we can solve this equation by trying to find a pair of characteristics. The idea is to find a pair of functions, sorry, sigma and gamma, so that gamma t, g of sigma of t and t is a constant. So what I do is I compute the derivative of this thing with respect to t, and I try to find condition on gamma and sigma that guarantees me that this quantity over here is a constant. And it turns out that it is quite easy to do, and we see that we only need to, to, to have the condition gamma prime plus phi times gamma equal to zero, and sigma prime plus phi times sigma plus q equal to zero. Okay, so just to be uh, clear here, the function phi is something that depends on my family mj of t and a. So it's something that is already dependent of my solution. But what I'm doing is I assume that this function phi is given to me, and I'm trying to solve the, the system of differential equation knowing the function phi in order to find a closed uh, formula that will give me the function phi. Okay, so here I'm saying that for all t, we have gamma t g of t and sigma t equal to gamma zero g of zero and sigma zero. And the important pairs of, uh, of remarks here is that g at time zero and for parameter s is an explicit formula. If I know my sequence aj and if I know my measure nu, I know exactly what is g of zero and s. And the second remark is that g of t and zero is exactly my unknown function phi of t up to the, uh, an affine transformation. So now we, what we do is we solve this pair of differential equations with condition gamma of t equal to one and sigma of t equal to zero. And this gives us a closed expression, a closed equation, sorry, uh, solved by the function phi. So it's a bit involved, but the idea is that if I denote by A the solution of uh, second derivative of A equal to first derivative of A times first derivative of A f of A minus one, where f is this function over here, which is very close to G of zero and S, then the function phi is just the second derivative of A divided by the first, deriv first derivative of A. So to compute the function phi, we only need to solve this autonomous system. And this is a classical thing to do, right? So we can do it by, more or less by hand. And A claims that A of T, I can write it as this horrible expression, right? So it's one over Q times the reciprocal of the function A sub A taken at Q times one minus E to the minus T. And what is the function I sub A? Well, it is this integral from zero to T of this product of one minus S AJ to the one minus Q new of J over Q. And okay, so the formula doesn't make uh, any sense and doesn't, is not particularly helpful for us. The only thing that is important to me, right, is that phi is the second derivative of A divided by the first derivative of A. And if I look at the first derivative of A, 
this first derivative will be equal to zero when the first derivative of i will be equal to zero. But it's really easy to look at the, uh, the derivative of the first, I mean, the derivative of, of the function i. It is just this product. And the first time where this product is equal to zero is when uh, my time t is equal to one over the uh, maximal value that I find in my uh, sequence of, uh, of parameters a, j, x. So the explosion time of our process is this minus log of one minus i a of na 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 na. So again, a complicated expression, but we know this explosion time. And once we have solved this equation, it's not too hard to show that in fact, the mj of a and t can be written in terms of the function a over here. Okay, so now if we come back and we fix aj to be equal to j for all j between zero and k star, so the mj's of a and t are this power series of the expected number of individuals in the reinforced Galton-Watson process. And using the fact that we know the explosion time of the mj of a and t, we are able to compute the explosion, uh, the, the growth rate of the expectation of the n. And we find that the limit as n goes to infinity of the expectation of the n to the power one of n using a careful uh, um, harmonic analysis method. So this is this q divided by the integral from zero up to one over the maximal parameter. So here it's one over k star times this product to one minus j times t to the this power my, one minus q over q times nu of j. And this quantity over here, well, this is the parameter m nu q that I talked to you about. So I'm not claiming that we took the most direct route to obtain this formula for the m nu q, right? If we already know that the mj of a and t can be written that way, there is a more direct route to be able to show it, right? Just verify that, right? You, you just define this a solution of this and verify that the mj's can be written that way. But what I'm saying is that there's not a much more direct book, right? So this formula cannot be obtained in a very simple fashion. And so we have this, uh, this formula for MUQ. What we can do is, well, first observe that if MUQ is strictly smaller than one, then if we use the Markov inequality and the uh, borel cantelli lemma, we know that the n will be uh, eventually equal to zero all motion. So we are able to compute the expected growth rate of the population. And we have a first condition that ensures us that the process goes exit. So now, uh, just uh, in the last uh, yeah, five to 10 minutes, I, I just want to uh, discuss very quickly the other side of the question. So condition for the survival of the process. And here I'm going to be uh, a bit more hand wavy in my uh, in my explanations. So what we showed in an ongoing article is that we have a pair of conditions. So q times k, uh, k star larger or equal than one or sum from j equal zero to k star of this one minus q, j nu j over one minus q larger than one. If one of those two conditions is satisfied, then we know that the process survived with positive parity. And if we know that the largest scary subtree of the reinforced Galton Watson process survives with positive parity, we are in fact able to show that the asymptotic behavior of the n is equivalent to the asymptotic event, as the asymptotic behavior of the expectation of the n on a set of positive parity. Okay, and if I want to look at the difference between the condition that we found for survival and the condition that we found for extinction, we see that we, we cover most of the parameter space of, uh, of the, the pair Q nu of, uh, of uh, reinforcement parameters and drop position. So the, the cases where we are not sure where we have survival or, or extinction represent quite a small area of the phase diagram of the population, but still, we don't know if uh, the blue curve or the orange curve 
which are the, the conditions that we that we gave for survival or extinction, are correct. And so far, our best guess is that neither the orange line nor the blue line are the correct one. There is something really in between those two curves that should give us the exact uh, condition for survival of the population. Okay, so well, let me just skip this as it is exactly what I said. So just something to, to observe is that if you look at the condition for survival that we wrote here, in fact, this condition is exactly the condition for survival of a simplified model. So it's a simplified reinforced Galton-Watson process where when you have reinforcement, you don't choose an ancestor uniformly on random, you just choose your parent. Right? So if my parent made, made uh, three children, then I will make three children or I reproduce according to the load view. And uh, everything then happens independently of random. And what's happened is that the process Z-bar then is just a multi-type Galton-Watson process with uh, a set of types that is one up to K star, which is exactly the number of children of its parent. And then it is quite easy and quite straightforward to study the condition for survival of this process. We just need to uh, study the largest eigenvector, oh, sorry, the largest eigenvalue of the mean replacement matrix of this uh, population model. And it is the largest solution of the sum of J equal zero up to K star of one minus Q J U J times divided by lambda minus Q J equal to one. And the condition for survival is that the parameter lambda is strictly larger than one, which is the same as saying that if I divide by one instead of by lambda, I get something that is strictly larger than one. So it is, uh, it is exactly the right uh, survival condition for this simplified reinforced galton watson process, but we still don't believe that it is uh, the right one for our galton watson process. And to tell you a little bit, so the idea here is to construct a martingale associated to uh, our reinforced galton watson process. And if we are able to show that this martingale is uniformly integrable, which we are able to do using uh, uniform integrability, then we show that if this condition over here is satisfied, then the martingale is positive with positive priority, and the martingale can only be positive if the, the Galton Watson process survives with positive priority. Okay, so yeah, maybe I jump this and I uh, end up with a, a quick sequence of open questions. So, first, uh, what are the open questions that remain? Uh, well, we still don't know anything about the right necessary and sufficient condition in terms of new and Q for the survival of the reinforced galton watson process. We don't know the acid moisture growth rate of the real population number, so the quantity ZZL, except in the simple case where we can survive, when the overall population can survive with positive priority. And Something that would be nice as well would be to uh, study the martingale that gives us information on the growth of the population at large time. And finally, a final step would be to give a more probabilistic interpretation of the competition we did so far, because from now on, we only looked at this, uh, at this population model through analysis argument. We don't have a purely probabilistic way of studying this. Okay, and I thank you for your attention. Thank you, Professor Bastian, for this nice talk and for this nice question also. Uh, are there some questions, please, in the public? Are there some, are there some questions? So uh, I, I have some uh, questions, uh, Professor, please. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe you have given the, the answer at the uh, in the last uh, slide, it is not possible to to have some martingale as in uh, the case of uh, that Watson process to obtain some uh, properties, uh, asymptotic properties. In this case, uh, for this model, it is hard we, to obtain some martingale. Well, we can construct, in fact, quite a lot of martingales because 
uh, a way to understand the reinforced galton watson process is to see it as a multi-type galton watson process with infinite number of types, whereas the, the type of integral is just a sequence of number of children that all of its ancestors had. Mm -hmm. So if we do it, if we see the, the population model like this, we can construct a lot of smart integrals. But the, the problem is, will the smart integral really represent the right number of individuals? What works just fine for the galton watson process is that all individuals have the same uh, basic evolution. So the martingale that we that we want to look at is a martingale that uh, gives the same weight to all individuals. Well, this is no longer the case in this reinforced galton watson process, so we cannot find a, uh, a martingale where I put uniform weight mm -hmm. on all the children. And therefore, we could have cases where our martingale goes to zero, but the population survives. Right? This is possible if for example, my product of weights here gives mass to a big group of individuals that is very, very small, despite the fact that they are very common. So the question of finding the right martingale here is still open. We, we don't know what is the right martingale okay. that should uh, represent the evolution of our population. Okay. Okay. And in your model, every descendant remember all the ancestors and choose one of them. Okay. Yes. Suppose that you have uh, one handed ancestors. It is not mm -hmm. possible, uh, realistic uh, speaking, that we can remember all these uh, descendants. Is there another, the, 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 this model that every, every individual remember only the last, uh, the last uh, MN descendant? At time N, every descendant remember mm -hmm. only uh, from n minus m up to n descendant and choose one of them uniformly. Right. So and this is, I mean, the, the simplest answer is the case of this model, right? When you remember only the number of children of your parents. Mm -hmm. And in this case, uh, well, the, the process then becomes uh, just a multi-type galton watson process with finite number of types because you only need to know the number of children of your parents, your grandparents, your great grandparents, let's say, if m is equal to 3. So you only need to know three values. And in this situation, you always know uh, a generic fashion to, to, to characterize survival or extinction of the population. Just need to compute the expected number of children of type j given by each individual of type i, this gives you a matrix of with positive uh, with positive entries, and if you look at the parent eigen eigenvalue of this matrix, uh, you 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 know if your process survives or not. If the parent eigen eigenvalue is larger than one, the population survives. If not, the population dies out. But but, but what, might... what is interesting here is that there's only one case where we are, we are able to find explicitly this parent eigen eigenvalue. It's when it's when m is equal to one. For we we looked at the situation where you remember the, your your parent and your grandparent, and there is no 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 general formula here. Okay. It is tractable for for our settings. Okay. Okay. So uh, yeah, in, in, in theory, uh, the the answer is if we look at your your variation of the model, the answer is known. In practice. The, the formula seems to be quite hard to obtain. Okay. And, and do we, if we change uh, just uh, the, the model of reproduction every time, that uh, for you, every, uh, every descendant with probability Q choose uh, uh, give descendant uh, with respect to the law new. And with the probability one minus q, he chooses one of his descendants and gives mm -hmm. the same, the exact number of descendants. Yeah, yeah. If, if we change a little bit of this model and we suppose that with probability q1, we use the reproduction now mu, with probability q2, we choose one from all ancestors, and with probability q3, we decide to not give the descendant. Okay, so have zero yeah, I, I think in, in this situation, 
So this is something that you can model by modifying the loan U, right? Yes. If you give larger priority to new uh, to new of zero, then you have no descendants, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So this this would be my answer. So it's just a modification of, of just, the loan. Just U modification of, uh, of the distribution new. So what we could do uh, as well is uh, modifying the way we choose the ancestor. So for, no, for now, we are choosing our ancestor uniformly at random between uh, the time at which we are and the, and the root. Uh, we could do uh, a, a modified, uh, we, we could modify the way we select our ancestor. We could, uh, okay. for example, sample them according to a geometric distribution of, uh, mm. you know, n minus a geometric distribution. And all of those questions so far are unanswered for us. We believe that the uniform distribution is kind of maximal in some sense for, for the survival of the population. It's, uh, it is, uh, from, the, from our computation perspective, it seems that the uniform distribution is particularly nice to, to study the evolution of this process. So we are not able to extend our results to um, modified methods of selection okay. of the system. Okay, uh, please, if you can go to slide 10, Yes. Okay, I have not understand very well this uh, this probability. One minus q multiplied by p plus q. Okay, I'm okay for the term one minus q multiplied by p. But what represents q? So, so q is uh, the probability that you uh, reinforce. You, you you do a, a, a general um, reproduction of children via reinforcement. So here in this very simple model, my individuals they have only zero or two children. So now if a child uh, reproduces according uh, using this uh, reinforcement step, uh, it will choose one of its parents. But I know I, I know for sure that all of its ancestors had exactly K children. Okay. Right? Okay. Okay. Thank. You. I understand. Okay. Thank. You. Uh, are there other questions, please? Uh, may I ask a simple one, please? Okay, then, uh, uh, your main uh, result is on uh, the, the approximation of expected uh, value of ZN. Mm -hmm. uh, um, are there any um, works done uh, the direction of approximating uh, the distribution of ZN? Or maybe... So, Huh? Uh, uh, well, my, my answer would be no. We, so, so, so far, we, we don't know anything about the true value of Zn. Uh, we are not even sure. And in fact, I kind of believe that it is not the case that Zn is of the same order as the expectation of Zn. There are mm -hmm. some, some cases. So when we can start have a key star Ari subtree of our trees that survive with positive priority, then uh, the expectation of the n grows exactly as as the n, exactly the same way as the n. But I believe this is not the case if you cannot uh, sustain this k star i a ray subtree, because uh, when you look at uh, the way we compute the expectation of the n, what we are doing is we are doing a large division uh, estimate on the reinforced random walk, and the optimal way for this reinforced random walk to make this large division event is to have k star child, well, to have a node equal k star, a1 equal k star, a2 equal k star, up to uh, a very large uh, time, and then let the process evolve independently. And this is something that is possible because I, I just computed the expectation of this sequence. If we were taking care of the fact that, in fact, we have not that many children, not that many individuals at the beginning, so a large addition event, that only uh, involves the beginning of the process is something that is not possible for our population model. So, okay. so I tend to believe that Zn should be much smaller than its expectation in general. And therefore that uh, knowing exactly the distribution of Zn is still, uh, is still something that we, we should be working on. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Have you some applications of uh, the reinforcement, uh, reinforcement, the Gatorlatson process? So, uh, well, this um, this is uh, so, so far the the idea behind this was to 
see how far we could modify the the, the original Galton Watson process to how, how it responds to very small modification of its uh, distribution now. Uh, but uh, so for, for now, what we are interested in is in, uh, in studying this uh, large efficiency for this random reinforced sequence. Because this is something that you, you find applications, for example, when you look at uh, reinforcement in machine learning. Uh, so what you what you see is you, you look at the whole history of your of your evolution to decide what to try for the next step. So the competition we did uh, seemed to be able to, to extend to a quite a general class of random reinforcement sequence, and we would like to study the large emissions for this random reinforcement sequence. Okay, thank you, thank you. Uh, are there other questions, please? Uh, if not, uh, just I have to point that uh, um, the all uh, open questions are in the uh, in the slides. Please, yes. Professor, if you can send me the slides. Yes, of course. Uh, and if one of the public has some questions or some suggestions, uh, we can uh, send you an email, no problem for you, Professor. Uh, yes, Bassian. of course, I, I, I'd okay. be happy to discuss them. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you for all the public and uh, you see much. your uh, last week. Thank you, bye. Thank you. Thank you, have a good day.